right? Yeah. Male banter, fucking having a bit of, giving your mates a bit of fucking, giving them a bit of shit, tapping on their insecurities a little bit, bit back and forth. And I, I think a lot of people are mislabeling that as toxic masculinity. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a real interest in this. I put a po- in a negative way? Like, they're like, oh, well, that's the problem with the world. This banter fucking thing going backwards and forwards and yeah, men yeah. taking the piss out of each other and that. And I'm like, well, it's a real interesting topic. This to- I don't think people don't even know what it is. I don't. I think It's subjective. It is. It's I an opinion. It's an opinion. Yeah. It's an opinion. And it's also, like, the jokes that we make with, um, like, the close circle of friends yeah. is they tap into your deepest insecurities yeah. which is amazing yeah because all right darren so let's uh, let's get straight uh down to it bro how was uh australia you just got back right yeah it was um it was amazing it was amazing obviously supporting like my best mate on tour going there initially i was a bit worried about the quarantine mm-hmm. but um i had an amazing time man it was the quarantine <laughs> i loved it i loved it because it was like imagine an environment where you only have one option to do one thing. There is no fear of FOMO, right? There is no fear of anything else other than cracking on with what you're supposed to do and working for yourself and Mm -hmm. online and all that stuff is I was like, you know what? I'm going to go in here and I said to myself, I'm going to get on TV. I'm going to smash the socials. And, uh, and I said, I'm going to make a viral video. I said that to myself and everyone was like, Darren, you're such a social guy. You're going to go crazy in there. And I was like, don't test me. Man. I mean, you did go a little bit crazy, to be fair. <laughs> I don't know if I went crazy or if I found myself. Really? <laughs> yeah, because like, I feel like when you're, how, how often are you completely on your own for two? When was the last time you were completely on your own for two weeks? Never. So how do you know who you are? Like, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I totally know what you mean, yeah. So it's like, Australia trip this year for me was like, I think I've actually grown up a lot from it. Yeah. And... um I'm really happy to be back and yeah. like, cracking on with. I want to take over London, man. I just want to take over. Dude, th- people, you, you know what? I, I saw a couple of things when you first went to Australia. If you were right, one, how much shit you got for actually going to Australia? How are you getting in? Why are you going? You shouldn't be traveling. You, you know, got what? all that shit, right? Yeah. So with that, it was crazy because a lot of people don't know the story of of me. I've actually got residency in Australia mm-hmm. for people that don't know this. And they're probably thinking, who the fuck is this London Turkish guy? How's he getting to Australia? And then you got some Aussies, yeah. A few of them were going like, there's families, there's family stuck in uh, the UK, can't even see their fa- uh, parents. And I was like, well, they fucking can. It's just that you choose not to pay for their ticket. This was the problem, right? People are like, people can't afford to get back. I'm like, bro, the whole of Australia to me is like, the whole of Australia is like fucking middle class. Yeah. If you need the money to buy a flight, for someone, mm-hmm. even if it's a business class flight, which is like four or five thousand dollars, you're telling me you don't have enough family members to get cash around to bring you home. Yeah. So that's why I was like, if you want to go home, yeah, you can get home. Yeah. You know. So the people that were giving me shit, yeah, but, but I think a lot of them also didn't want to do the two week quarantine. That be as me. well. So I didn't think me. of that. I'd be like, wow, that is like, do you know when you do you know when you do things that. I do a lot of challenges because I'm like, on the other side of that, I'm going to be different. Like, j- your first jiu-jitsu comp. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Your, your, your first boxing match, jumping out of a plane. Yeah. Uh, running a half marathon, doing the Goggins challenge. I haven't yeah. even spoke about that on this podcast yet, actually. I've, I've four miles it. every four hours for 48 hours. Oh, I did it, but no training. Really? And with 20 kilos on my back. How was it? Horrific. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't actually, like do you know, it wasn't that bad. It, wasn't, it yeah. was naughty, but those kind of challenges, you do them because you... Beco- on the other side of that, you become someone different. So what do you not- think of him with that sort of stuff? Well, I think I've got him booked for December, so I'll not talk too much. Okay, cool. <laughs> but, mate, do you know, I think he's an inspirational guy, but I think there's something to be said that not everything has to be about how much you can suffer. I had a fair bit of fun doing that thing because I took my mind to a place that was fun. I mean, I remember two of the runs were at 3 a.m., me on my own on the course road, pitch black, 3 a.m., and I'm singing fucking Whitney Houston. <laughs> on a dance with somebody. <laughs> and that other one is a, uh, how will I know if he really loves me? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm singing that at the top of my voice along the course road. So it, it's like, it doesn't have to be about suffering. But yeah, that two week quarantine for me feels like it will be harder yeah. than all of the other shit put together. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think 
your like your mind is like so powerful, right? Yeah. It's hard because like we make it harder. Yeah. And by I, what we're focused on, right? Exactly. You, fo- you, fo- you weren't focused on being stuck in quarantine. Yeah. You were focused on how can I possibly make the best yeah, exactly. of being here for two weeks. What could I, what could be the best outcome? What can I do versus what I can't what can't exactly. I do? It's like that was like um lockdown, right? So many people are focused on I can't go to the pub, I yeah. can't go to the restaurant, I can't go to the gym. Instead of focusing on, well, I can't do that, but what can I do? Exactly. And I focused on that. And then you helped me. I'll build a business out of it from doing that. You know, like yeah. getting people to focus on what's important yeah. and not worrying about what they can't do. Yeah. And I did that in quarantine. And the best thing is I had a, I had a great time. Like I had literally, I was looking out the window and there was fucking people having a good time. Um, the weather was unreal. So imagine this, you get off the flight. By the way, Australia did this so good. Like the whole quarantine thing, like they were legit. Not like the UK. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So... The minute I got off, it was military. Mm-hmm. Was it? Fucking soldiers taking you from the flight to the bus, man. Jeez. Yeah, so you're going from aircon on the plane for 24 hours, mm-hmm. airport, land in Sydney, mm-hmm. you walk through the airport, aircon, there's a split 15 seconds yeah. of you putting your bag on the bus, mm-hmm. getting fresh air, mm-hmm. and going onto the bus with aircon. Straight into a five star hotel with aircon for two weeks. Jeez. No fresh air. Yeah. No fresh air at all. So yeah. by the end of it, my skin was getting a bit dry. Yeah. You know, I was like trying to stay Speak hydrated. Lima. Yeah. Speak yeah. Lima about that yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I give him so much shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> so like my skin was getting a little bit dry, but that was the only bit of fresh air uh, fresh air I had yeah. for over two weeks. Jeez. And then when I came out, I was like, now, when I think about it now, so I feel like it didn't. Dude, I, all I remember about that as well is you doing videos dancing. Yeah. Doing the thing with a microphone. Oh, yeah. The fucking microphone yeah. thing. And Hans Zimmer in the background. <laughs> I, I, and people sending you food. Yeah. You were like, I can't eat any more yeah. food. Yeah. And then I, I was like, you had an assault bike in the air in a room. Sonny you, Webster looked after me. I bet you haven't been on an assault bike since. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, I've got one in the garage yeah. that I'm using now because yeah. I can't do any cardio apart from this. And I've just nicknamed it the Devil's Dildo. The Devil's Dildo. That's the Devil's Dildo. I'm never getting on a bike again once my pecs heals. Like. But you know what? That. that I had so much fun doing that because by the time I got out, the hotel staff, Mm -hmm. the nurses, Mm -hmm. everyone knew like who I was. And the minute I got out of the hotel, like within an hour, someone ran up to me going, Diren, I need a selfie. That quarantine thing, I was watching it religiously. And I was like, this is fucking mental. I can't believe like what you can achieve in a room. And like everyone has the power to do that. Everyone's got the power to achieve whatever it is, but it's just... Just focusing on that, you can do it. Yeah, know? I think it's also a willingness as well, right? Like, you were willing to do video after video, willing yeah. to look stupid, willing to be criticised. Yeah. yeah. Dude, is that weird, getting the whole selfie thing? When uh, people it, bump into you and that? It is weird, but I'm not going to lie. I love it every fucking time. Do me too. Any, any person I, that... I get it, which is really weird. Yeah. And but... I'm only on 20-something thousand followers. Yeah, I, but I don't think it's about the followers. Dina. I don't think, think it's about the number. Because I was getting it when I had 10,000 followers. Yeah. My kids love it, by the way. Oh, yeah, they it's cool. They fucking love it, man. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. That was part, that's part of the reason why I want this next book deal, because I want to go to... When you go to the airport... Yeah. And you got the WH Smith and shit. Yeah. I want my kids to go, Dad, there's you. Yeah. And that's, that's like, cool. instead of them saying, Dad, there's James. <laughs> I, was, I was... When I would see... When we were, like, obviously on tour, like, jumping yeah. on plane to plane, whatever. So I'd be like, we're going to every bookstore to see yeah. if um, Smith's book's there. Yeah. I'll just go draw dicks in them. <laughs> and they'll come up to me like, what are you doing? I'm like... Signing it. I'm Signing the manager. It. I'm like, I'm the manager. <laughs> I'm the manager. I love that, you know, man. Yeah, so. I love that. So it was... Um, what was it like seeing James? for? Because you hadn't seen your best mate for like... Oh, yeah. How long it was, was it? It was like a year, right? It was just under a year. Yeah. I That's what I thought, because he went out to Australia just after he did that. Yeah. Did the tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you were here until... I came back. January. Yeah. 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 And then, so yeah, just under a year. It was it was really good. I did, I did miss him. But I think it was also very important for me to be away from him for my own growth. Yeah. Which I think was well, dude, really good. Dude, you put good. some hustle in while he was away. Huh? You put some hustle in while he was... Yeah, you man, know, I was, you were here. I was hustling, and I think that's why, like, the whole seeing him was great because me and Smith are so different. We're very different, mm-hmm. which is why when we do stuff together, it works out very well mm-hmm. because we're complete different personalities. We have similar, I guess, morals from, I guess, having good parents. Yeah, the same values. Same values. That's the right yeah. word. Yeah, same values, but personalities are very different, yeah. and we complement each other. Well, I mean, that's why mar- a lot of marriages work like that. Me and Leslie. 
chalk and cheese, but we have the same values. I reckon, you see, you see, relationships fuck up most relationships because there's sex involved, right? Because there's no sex involved in me and Smith, I reckon it'll be the longest relationship <laughs> I'll ever have. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, dude. Sex fucks it up. <laughs> With relationships, dude, it does. You're back on. So were you quite literally then out of quarantine and on tour? Uh, within 10 days. So this is what happened. So because of like the whole uh, COVID restrictions, mm-hmm. we had to leave two weeks earlier before the tour started, we started driving up the coast in case flights and stuff didn't go. Ah, okay. So me and Smith hired a car, yeah. hired a car, Yeah. started driving up the coast all the way up to Brisbane to the first show and we just stopped off everywhere. I actually had my gap year <laughs> in Australia this What's year. What's that? My gap year. Oh, your gap year. Your gap year. I had a gap year where I actually travelled the country Jeez. and I've never done that before. We I were driving know. around. No, I never like really, I went to Australia and I lived there but I never, I went to cities but I didn't do the whole in a car, driving up the coast, stopping yeah. off, yeah. jumping in the water, all this shit. So yeah. we'd done that yeah. and it was, it was great to be able to connect with like James because you don't realise how much people can grow in a year's time, especially people like us are always looking to evolve. You know, I read an email from you yesterday, or maybe the day before, where you were talking about you had a you had a thousand in your bank account. You had yeah, a thousand in your bank account. That was that was before, just before lockdown. lockdown yeah, yeah, I'd dude, ain't that insane? I I had a hundred thousand followers. Yeah, I had I had over a hundred thousand followers. I yeah. had a thousand pound in my bank account, and yeah. people thought I was fucking killing it, and I wasn't. And that happens. All the time on Instagram, right? You it see does. All this shit and... It does. But I, I was like, I was even when I spoke to you, mm-hmm. and I was like, I know there's something like yeah. it's gonna happen. Yeah. Something's gonna happen yeah. where things are gonna turn around, yeah. and financially for me. Yeah. And I didn't want to give in to that ads thing because chatting to like my manager, he was he was like, dude, if we did ads this year, this is the calculations. Yeah. Like I would have made over a hundred grand just yeah. off ads if I wanted to, yeah. but I didn't want to give in because my values were not that. I want I I, lo- I genuinely love coaching. Yeah, I love helping people, and I love seeing that growth not with just my clients but with me as well. Yeah, and it, it's so much more valuable than then going hashtag ad or whatever. Not yeah. that there's anything wrong with that, yeah. but that's not my purpose. You felt like you got more to offer than that. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, if I don't fulfill a purpose, then what's the point of me? Like, what's the point of anything? Mm. You know, so once I figured that out and you helped me figure that out, I was like, I remember calling you. I was like, Paul, I know I'm a good coach. I know I'm doing the right things, but there's there's something that's missing. It was just the it was the model of delivery. Yeah, it, it was, was the delivery. The full. What, how am I going to fulfill? Yeah. What I, I had the ingredients. Deli- yes, you helped me put a recipe yes. together. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think that um, I think that it was never about. It wasn't even about marketing for you, really. It was about just how am I going to deliver it in a way that's kind of, what you built was a hybrid model. Yeah, it's not go and do your own thing. Yeah, but it's also not babysitting. Exactly, which yeah. is what a lot of one-to-one is. It's a lot yeah. of babysitting in it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like it, so what you built is kind of like a group training yeah. thing. And then people do their own thing, but then they have accountability from you yeah. and the rest of the group. And then when when you helped me with that, what I did was so many things because. Just like I talk to you, I talk to so many people. Like I've I've had so many clients in the past that are like sold multiple companies to yeah. like IBM this. Like guys that have hundreds of millions, yeah. right? And every time I speak to them, I always learn something. Yeah. I learn some I learn things from everyone. When you help me put that recipe together, things just clicked in my head and then I just kind of took off yeah. with now the qualities that I have yeah. and put it together. Yeah. And the best thing about all of that is from a business standpoint, is figuring out is so much fun. Oh, man. And it's so much more satisfying. Yeah. Like, if I was to earn just a pound today from what I've done compared to what another brand has yeah. pushed me to do, yes. that makes me way happier. Yeah, huge. You know? Huge. So, and I think that that business model also suits your style. Yeah. Because I think there's something about, I'm the same as this, there's something about not just them buying something and then going away, there's something about them buying something and then he, then you helping them to implement it and execute it. That's yeah. part of the reason why I killed that email domination academy thing. I'm like, I don't massively buy into the idea of, hey, buy this and then I leave you to your own devices. It's kind of yeah. like, I love that you're involved with them. You, it's kind of a performance all the time as well, right? It is. It's like... When you're going to do a Q&A, you're kind of still performing and well, that's your whole game. Which it? is why I think I can't wait for my live events. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So 
I'm like, because every time I think about it, on the stories that I do, the reason you engage with me or even you reply to my story and laugh, I'm like, fuck, I must be doing something yeah. for him to respond like that. Yeah. Whether it's him releasing dopamine or whatever yeah. in his head, I must be doing something. Yeah. And maybe just by doing it in a style of how I delivered whatever I yeah. delivered on a story or social yeah. post or whatever it is, yeah. you kind of gain respect from people to kind of listen to you when you have something to say. Yeah. Serious. Yeah. Like something about that can add value to them. Yes. So they're like, you know what? I'm going to listen to him because he makes sense or whatever. Yeah. You know? Let's talk about this um, tour thing then. You know what I, th I love that you said about figuring out actually? My coach says this and it's something that's made a lot of sense to me is he says when you're setting a goal or you're creating a mission or you're creating some targets to aim for for yourself, he says this, the how is none of your business. And I love like, I love that because it's like, I think that we don't set, it's not that we set goals that are too hard. It's like we don't set goals that are exciting enough. Yes. A lot of people's goals are just too boring. That's yeah. why they don't hit them. Yeah. They're not too hard, they're too boring. So he's like, if you know how, the goal's not big enough. Yeah. And then, because you have to figure it out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you set a goal of earning, just making this much money. Yeah. Would just If you did just make it about money, it would have been a bit boring for you. A hundred percent. Do you know what I mean? If it was just money, then I would have, I would have done ads. I would have done ads. Or I would have said to, I would have even said to someone like James Smith or someone else, going, "Hey, uh, you can have me, my following, my brand, uh, pay me this much, easy, yeah. done." Yeah. You know. But I don't. I want. I like figuring out. It's like if you're not figuring things. And that's out, why I love jujitsu, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not just having a fight. It's not. It's figuring out how, how to... Why the fuck do I keep getting strangled? Exactly. Why I, in my case, why the fuck do I keep getting armbarred? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, before I tore my pec, I was getting armbarred all the time. Really? And I never figured it out, so it's me on fucking fault. But I bet you will from now. Oh, I'll never get armbarred again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm just going to keep me right hand behind me. Escapes, I'm going yeah. to get a, I'm gonna get a pair of gi pants with a pocket yeah. in it. And I'm just going to put me right hand in my pocket. Yeah. Keep but, me right on me, pocket, pocket eye. But that's like the important thing, right? You do that and then you take action from that. Yeah. And as yeah. I'm getting older, and people are like, doing you're changing. I'm like, yeah, because when you first started following me, I was at 25. I'm 29 now. I'll be like, I'm glad you noticed. I've been trying really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just buzzing you noticed that I've changed. <laughs> Fuck me. Jeez. It's, uh, so let's talk about this, what I skipped over there, which is this live thing. How's, what, how are you feeling about that? Um... It's, I've got butterflies about it. I'm a little bit nervous about it, but every time I'm nervous, it's usually the right thing. That's how you know it's a, yeah. So I'm really excited and it's just going to be a night packed of pure energy, just like what people know me on socials mm -hmm. is going to be live in the flesh. Not just me, but with other people and all sorts of weird shit. Is it? Yeah, 100%. People that come... Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make this a UK tour. I'm going to make this a world tour as well. Mm -hmm. People that come are going to come in and go, what the fuck just happened? Really? Yeah. They're going to walk out and go, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> I need to tell my mates this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm going cool. to make sure. That's my goal. I need people to say that. If they don't, that's... And I'm going to figure out how. Yeah. So I'm very excited for it. I can't yeah. wait. I can't. So it's not just going to be... Here's the vibe I'm getting here. It's not just going to be you talking about the importance of Needle 24-7. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not talking about what I'm like, okay, I reckon I think what a lot of people don't do is a lot of people talk about what's right for people, right? Mm -hmm. But I think I think leading by example is so underrated. So I feel like people respect me maybe because I lead by example with certain things. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do what I do. Mm -hmm. On stage, and if I inspire someone that day, I'm not going to go up there and talk about benefits of fat loss and all this shit. Because I do that every day anyway. People can mm -hmm. come sign up to whatever I do uh, according if they want to. I'm convinced that people out. know what they do anyway. They do. They, they know just, what they do. They just don't know. They don't do what they know. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to go on there, have a great time, and make sure people have a great time, and then walk away feeling inspired, yeah. feeling energize and feeling you know what fuck it i can't wait till tomorrow yeah to talk about this <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a and, and you were saying before because this was my the question that's in uh, code here that's what i love about my writing my writing's yeah. terrible so is but it's great because no one can read it <laughs> so i've probably got loads of amazing ideas in here that no one will no ever one steal knows, yeah i don't i can't even read it and you were saying before that you think opening for james yeah has helped you a ton to prepare you for this yeah yeah exactly so when you think about like, um, I think a common mistake a lot of people do is they um, they rush into things, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, 
maybe if I did uh, my own tour the same time as Smith did when he started like yeah. two years ago, three years ago, whatever yeah. it was, then it wouldn't have sold out. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have been confident enough to talk about it like the way I talk about it now. Yeah. People shoot their load early. They focus on what other people are doing so much instead of focusing on how to develop their own self. And I've always did that when Smith is doing his journey. Because he's doing his journey, I'm doing my journey, you're doing your journey. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got their own journey. And what I was doing most is focusing on myself and waiting for the right time to have a show. And after the last tour in Australia opening for James, like... I would interact with the crowd so much and talk. I know James is fuck. His legs probably shaking on the outside, going, "Dear, and shut the fuck up and get off stage." And I'm like, "I run this stage now. <laughs> I'm not getting off. I'm on not a, getting on off." On a scale of one to ten, ten being uh, the highest number, how much do you rinse him when you're on the stage? It's a high number, but it's a high number. It's a high. It's number. a high number. Yeah. But I, f I focus on not rinsing him as much and giving more value yeah. as me yes. more. Yes. Because I think now I'm in a place and I'm more confident to offer people more than I thought I did yes. back two years ago yes. when I didn't not know much about myself. I did, but it's it's a learning process. People forget that like, like you're older than me. You're more experienced than me. James is older than me. He's more experienced than me, you know? So I learn what I can from other uh, yeah. everyone around me yeah. and then do what I do best as my complete self, you know? Yeah, and that's yeah. what I've started doing more. And then that's why management was like, Darren, it's, you need a show now. Because after seeing, I guess, how I perform or whatever it is. But um, it's just reps on reps on reps. And then you get more confident each time Each time yeah, we do a I, podcast. I'm convinced that a lot of people don't even want to do the reps. They don't they want, want the do results. The reps. They want the result, but they don't want to do the reps. And then they come with excuses. Yeah. Yeah, but you did this because of this. I'm like, yeah. well, no, you yeah. did, I did this because I made it happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot of people kind of want it. Yeah. They don't kinda want, want it. it. They yeah. kind of want it. Yeah. The kind of one that they've got, the reasons are more important than the results. Yes. Like their excuses. Are, it. it, mate, it's an, it's an obvious. dropping bombs, big man. Mate, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. Hey, can you say that again? Look into the camera. <laughs> hey, clip that for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> any, um, any nerves before you get on the stage? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. But like, you know when you get nerves before you spar? Mm -hmm. Excited nerves. Mm -hmm. Not like... I'm going to fuck up nerves. More like, I want to get on. It's your body giving you the energy. That yeah, you yeah. Need like, I want to get on. Like, me and Smith are backstage. It's so much fun because yeah. I call it match day. Yeah. I call it match day because on a match day, I used to just focus when I used to play football. Yeah. Um, me and Smith will go for a walk and I used to do that with football. I used to be like, Smith, let's put on the headphones and just focus. But we're with each other, mm -hmm. but we're not talking. Yeah. We're focusing on what we're there to do today. Yeah. And I look at it like this. I look at it as people that are coming People that have paid for Smith's tour, I'm also going to be there. People that have paid to come and even watch me on stage, even if it is for 20 minutes, I need to turn up and give the value that they've paid for. Yeah. I don't want to disappoint anyone. So I take it seriously in a sense as I'm focusing on this because I want to give value to the people that respect me. You Do you know? have a hype track? Do you I, have a hype oh, song? Yeah, yeah I get, there's a song that I come up to. I come out to, but I change it depending on what mood I'm in. Yeah. But now I reckon what I'll do now is I'll probably I'll probably be that fucker that meditates before I go on stage now. I reckon. Oh mate, I'm all about that hype, mate. Oh, yeah, I'm all about that hype. High hopes. You know, high hopes, panic at the disco. Yeah, I fucking yeah. love that song. That's a, that's a hype. That's my hype track. It's like a walking track, innit? I know, because when I used to, not when I used to, even when I was doing like your email domination and stuff, like. Did I always have that on? You'd, you'd have music on. I'd be like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I love a hype track. Um, so, nerves are, you're framing nerves as, as I think that nerves are, and self doubt. Because you must have self doubt with that whole thing. I'm like, I'm supposed to have self doubt because yeah. I give a fuck. And I've ne or I've never done it before. Yeah. Or. It's not going anywhere, I don't think. People yeah. are so obsessed with, oh, well, I just need more confidence. I'm like, no, you have to do it without confidence. Yeah. This you is know what I'm saying? I, I do. I get that. You but can't then... show up the jujitsu already being a blue belt. Yeah. yeah. No, no, oh, that's, <laughs> that's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. if you think you need confidence to do something, that's yeah. like saying, I need a blue belt to go to yeah. jujitsu. You get the blue belt after you've showed up to a bunch of classes yeah. and got submitted a bunch of times. Yeah. But w what I think about is, even when I get nervous, is I'm like, I'll turn up. I'm there, I'm backstage, why am I here? That's the first thing. Mm. I'm here 
because I've done something mm -hmm. that I've earned the reason to be here. Mm -hmm. I've been flown out to Australia to open this tour for a fucking reason. Yeah, that's cool. You know, so James wants me there because he knows without me opening, it's not going to be the show. <laughs> you know, because he, we've, he's been, we've been doing it together since he started. Yeah. So I'm there because people value me to be there. Yes. So when I feel nervous, I'm like, no matter what happens, everything I say, everything I write down, anything that I think of that I think I'm going to say or I think I'm going to flop, mm. it all comes from me anyway. So how can you fuck it up? Yeah. You know, that's how I think of it now. Dude, I love that. And the thing is, if it's coming from you, even if you do fuck up, nobody knows. And it's me, fuck, yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah, nobody knows, yeah. So yeah. many things happen. Like, I say that all the time of public speaking. I'm like, that's why I don't have loads of slides with words on. Yeah. I just have slides with pictures on, and then I'm like, well, if I fuck up, nobody knows. Yeah, exactly. Because it's my story. Yeah, exactly. It, and it comes from you, yeah. so how can you? No exactly. one knows I fucked up except me, so if I do fuck up, I, you just keep going. Exactly, yeah. So, dude, let's talk about the thing that... um that there's a couple of things that I really want to talk about with you today. The first one is this concept that everyone thinks you're mad for not wanting to stay in Australia. Oh, I've noticed that. Fucking Why are you coming back to the UK? I get it, by the way, because yeah. I lived abroad. Yeah. First of all, UK is home. London is home. Mm -hmm. Wherever my family is home for me. Yeah. I value my family. Yeah. I want to be there for my family. And when I'm, when I'm, when I feel like when I'm happy, when I'm winning, I want to enjoy that with my family. You want to share it with I want to share it yeah. with my loved ones. Yeah. I don't want to share it with people in Australia. No offense yeah. to anyone there. I've got yeah. good friends there, but I don't care. Yeah. I don't care enough to sh share it with you. It's yeah. nice sharing it with you guys, yeah. but... Well, dude, I saw your fucking Uber Eats bill, so... Yeah, exactly. You've definitely, you've definitely yeah. been sharing it a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. You've definitely been sharing yeah. that shit. Yeah, but like, obviously, James, Lucy Lord, and a couple other people out there are obviously very... Well, Lord's back today. Lord, so and, there's a, back. and there's a reason she's back, you yeah. know? So the thing about Australia for me is it's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't like comfortable. Yeah. I think comfortable makes you too comfortable. And, and you then you end up uncomfortable. You end up uncomfortable, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you're, I'm not being tested there. Yeah. I walk out, I have a conversation with someone. I'm not being tested. Yeah. Sometimes I walk around in London and someone's giving me a dirty look saying, what the fuck are you looking at? I'm being tested. I'm not saying like... <laughs> As in roughness, but I'm By the way, about... what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you exactly. Want some? But like, you want some, do yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. See, but I'm <laughs> I'm having to deal with like constant challenges, yeah. but challenges that I enjoy yeah. here. Yeah. Whereas when I'm there, I don't blame people for not being motivated out there. Mm. You you're born into a country which is amazing. I love Australia. Mm -hmm. And I think people in Australia don't understand the value of Australia until they leave, which is why I love it. Because you're born, right? You're born into somewhere like minimum wage is like fucking nineteen, twenty dollars an hour, man. You know? Imagine imagine being like eighteen years old and you're earning like seven, eight hundred dollars. Don't look that Mac like he's on minimum wage, bro. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a big money. No, no, but I'm saying like imagine <laughs> imagine like your first job compared to you started this or oh, your yeah. first yeah. job. You know, Dude, my factory, first job was a factory. YTS. Yeah. Forty quid a week. Exactly. I had to work two jobs yeah. so I could pay for booze and drugs exactly the <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> so like imagine that you wake uh, you, you wake up to that you're born into that mm. you're born into vitamin d mm. all year long big vitamin d has a big impact on how you feel and mm -hmm. how you act right so imagine as soon as you remove vitamin d what happens well, dude, someone I, I once read that the countries with the lowest vitamin d actually weren't only the well, the countries that have the highest covid death rates i did read that but also the countries with the lowest levels of vitamin d had the highest uh, alcohol intake yeah. rates. Yeah. I think it was something like fucking Ireland that was the yeah, probably. right up there. Ireland or Sweden. Or yeah, something Sweden. like that. Something like that. But like, you have everything. You have beautiful women, you have good coffee, you have beaches, you mm -hmm. you have everything. So what the fuck do you work for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what are you working well, for? Well, I've heard Smith often say that he'd, he would be cool just working in a coffee shop there, right? I'm sure he's... I don't think... That's, see, that's why me and Smith are different. Yeah. Smith... Would would live in Australia for the rest of his life. Yeah, I can't think of anything worse. Yeah, that's mad. I can't think of anything worse. Yeah, it's too easy. Yeah, it's too easy. I I, I don't know. That's no disrespect to any Australians. Listen, yeah. I, I well, love. But mate, Australia. your hustle muscle's grown in the last year or so. Your hustle muscle is fucking massive now, right? Yeah, it's has your hustle muscle always been big though, right? Oh. Yeah, it, my hustle. Yeah, your hustle muscle. Yeah. Oh yeah, always, always, yeah. always. I've always been like a. But the last year, it's gone. The last year, I've I've. I put it in a way that I understand. 
better now. You've got a mission now. Yeah. More of a mission. Yeah, because yeah. before I was hustling, Before, well, even when Smith and James Shaw had the JSA, they liked me because I hustled every day. Mm. I was the only coach. I was sending out 100 programs a day. You know, I was hustling hard. Now he's sending out 100 emails a day. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do send out 100 yeah, emails. You got yeah. one this morning. Well, I, did, I did get that one. Did you see my reply to you? I did see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agreed with you. Yeah. But also, you you know that when you send that email, there's a lot of hustle after it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it was a quick... When you send an email... How many people are on your email list? I've got now anything from 20 to 30. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that when you send that email your inbox is going to blow up. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and then you got to hustle. And you need to have the hustle mentality to be able yeah. to do that. Dude, I have, we have to outsource that. Now. We have to I have to delegate that. Yeah. Leslie has to now go in and answer all those emails. Yeah, now, yeah. So many come back. Yeah. First world problem though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So dude, um, you love, you came back to the UK because you want to live yeah, I love, here. Yeah, I, I love London, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna Just be. mad that. Max says that all the time. He said last night, he said, I, I could live in London. Yeah, he could live in London. I couldn't. It's a bit busy for me. Yeah, but but I like a bit of space. Yeah, but you're still connected to that um, mentality of if if for me to achieve the certain goals that I want, I want yeah. my own TV show. I want to be on TV. I want to yeah. do this. I want to do that. Yeah, it happens in Europe. It happens in UK. It happens in America. Yeah, you got a lot of connect here as well, right? Yeah. If I need something, I can call someone. If I if I need help, if I'm really busy, I'm like, Mom, Dad, can you help me? My cousins, if I need something, you know, mm. uh, management here, like, oh. If I need to, I know I could call you and be like, I need help with this. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? You know? I can't do that when I'm there. You're just you so far, you feel disconnected. Yeah. You yeah. know? So it's... I felt like that in Spain. And I didn't even know anyone there. When I moved to Spain, I didn't know a single fucking person there. Me oh. and Leslie, newborn baby. You lived there for how long? Two-year-old. Two years. Two years, yeah. Two years. And I felt like that. Completely isolated. I did the whole... I did the whole eliminate all the negative people from your life and there was only me left. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't buy into all that. I buy into it a little bit, but I don't buy into all of it. But yeah, I felt, and I was only three hours away. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Two and a yeah. half hours away. In but how much do you now love? Like when I go to Australia, like this last day was, I, I stayed a little bit too long. Yeah. How much do you love it now when you go away for like a month or six weeks or something mm -hmm. and then you're like, I fucking love it. Dude, dude I hated, when I moved to Spain, I hated my town. Yeah. Hated it. And then I came back. I'm like, I'll never move from here again. Yeah. And I could live in America. My dad's American. Oh, yeah. That's so right. I could live in the States. I could live anywhere, really. Yeah. And uh, But I'll never move. The house I'm in, I'll never move from. Yeah. Ever. Everyone's like, John, would you move in these new houses? I'm, like, I'm not moving from here. Ever. I love it. I've, there's not many houses in South Shields where you can see the sea and walk to the beach. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking freezing all year round, but it's, it's not Australia, but oh, still. I would love that. That view's incredible. My son, every day, my son wakes up and I see him. He thinks I don't know he does it. He opens his curtains and looks at the sea for about five minutes. Just looks out the window at the sea. It's phenomenal, lad. You know what I mean? There's not many There's not many places in the world where you can do that. I'm going to come just to meditate on that, the beach. Well, you, <laughs> the spare room's got the fucking sea view. Oh, sick. I'm it's got the sea view. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. So, so, dude, one thing I did want to talk about that I was really interested in talking about, and I'm sure you'll want to talk about as well, was this fucking racist incident. Mm. Because I was talking to Alima about this yesterday, right? I have never, in my white privileged life, experienced racism i've never seen it yeah. i've never really heard it it's not something that i've been around yeah. because i'm not you, you're from a multicultural yeah. city i'm yeah. not yeah yeah there was no black kids in my school yeah it's a few indian kids yeah but it wasn't I, I never really seen that and our town's not really like that i don't think it's not it's not a cultural it's not a multicultural city yeah so you 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 naturally would lack knowledge on certain things. Yeah. So right? when everyone was talking about Black Lives Matters and that, I'm like, well, it's not okay to be a racist, con, but I didn't have any comment because my yeah. I'm like, I'm not gonna. I think the problem with today's society is people have very strong opinions on shit that they know fuck all about. <laughs> yeah. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything about this. Yeah. Yeah. I dropped the Ant Middleton clip and everyone started slating. I'm like, you've listened to a 59 second clip. Yeah. And made three days worth of assumptions. Yeah. Me, Ant Middleton's a nice guy. Yeah. I've tried to him. We ran into him in a, uh, in a in a lounge before we flew out for the first Oscar. Yeah. Chatted to him on there. I chatted to him on the flight. Yeah. I chatted to him when I landed yeah. in um, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Then I chatted to him in inbox, mate. He's yeah. a nice guy. Yeah, he's a cool guy. A cool but 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 like, what, what I'm saying is that I, I never give my opinion on that Black Lives Matter thing, on that racist thing, because I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Maybe I need to educate myself. I don't know. But So what was that? What happened? So basically... I was in a bar in Australia, in Queensland, mm -hmm. somewhere, Burley Head, Burley Head, that this... On tour? On, on tour, we, we, had like a, we, we had like a few days off, so yeah. it was one of the boys' birthday. Yeah. We went away for his birthday, like for the weekend, yeah. and uh, we went to this bar, 
some Burley Head Pavilion or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was in a queue and this girl was like looking at me. She wanted to kind of chat sort of thing. That's why I got the vibe, but I didn't really want to chat to her. Yeah. And um, she kept staring at me and I was like, okay, cool. But like in a weird, like a fucking angry way. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. And then she jumped in front of me in the queue yeah. and me and this guy went, yo, what's going on? What are you doing? There's a queue here. Mm -hmm. what, what are you doing? She looked at me and she, <laughs> she was like, what are you going to do about it? And started poking my chest. I was like, excuse me? Arm drag. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Bro, if it was a guy, arm drag going if it on. was a guy, I was yeah. hoping it was a guy. But yeah. anyway, yeah. Um, and I said, "What are you doing?" Yeah. I said, "I said, don't fucking touch me." I said, "Don't touch me. I don't know you like that. Don't touch me." You know, like she was like, "Oh, yeah, don't touch me. Go back to your country, you fucking leb, and push my face." I was more offended that she didn't even acknowledge my actual fucking culture. I thought that Lebanon, <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah. Where the fuck she got that yeah, from? Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of Lebanese in Australia. Is that anyone dark? Really? Like, anyone kind of darkish? Yeah. People there that are not, don't look into people's culture, just yeah. assume people are Lebanese or they call really? them lebs. Yeah. I got so many messages after that saying people in Oz are fucking racist. Really? So many. I didn't know. I didn't know because I, I kind of look at it as, the problem is she didn't annoy me. As in that, it does, I wouldn't lose sleep over that. Yeah. I'm someone that I take action when I see hair or racism. I don't go, I don't go black lives matter on socials eh, yeah. or this bullshit. I take action there and then if I see racism, if I see someone getting on the treated individual. unfairly. Yeah, there and on the individual. Or if I see someone getting treated unfairly on the street, I'll be like, yo, what's going on? Because that's what you're supposed to do as people like in communities. Yeah. You look after people, yeah. you know, no matter who you are, where you live. Yeah. If you, We're all from planet Earth and everyone should be treated fairly, right? Yeah. So I got shocked at the fact that, and I, I went like this. I was like, what the fuck? I looked around. And people just kind of putting their head down want to ignore it. Yeah. And I was like... So you think other people heard it? I know other people heard it. And they they got shook. Even the boys that I was with, they were like, yeah, yeah, ignore it. Man. I was like, I'm fucking ignoring this, bro. I said, of course you'll say ignore it. You've never fucking experienced it, you know? James was like, oh, be careful. You're looking a bit aggressive. I said, I don't give a fuck, bro. Bro, do you know, I get this when... Do you know sometimes I like to post those... When I get those gnarly comments on Facebook, and I like to post it and have a bit Yeah, of yeah, yeah. People are like, oh, just ignore it. And I'm like... That's easy for you to say because you've never... Exactly. The most criticism you've had is off your mates taking the piss out the size of your balls. And or also, yeah, you also, I mean? it lets that person think they can do it again. But that's what I think. It's a hard balance. Like, I'm it like, I, there's, there's, I get told to kill myself on a daily. On the daily, someone says you should have jumped off that cliff, right? Yeah. And then every so often, you know, when you're tired, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. There's a guy saying, you're telling me to kill myself. You've got two kids in your profile picture, mate. It's not okay for you to tell someone else's dad to kill themselves. That's not okay. But then you, you also, at the same time, you're like, Am I, should I waste energy on this? Yeah. I think I think it really depends on the case yeah. scenario. Yeah. But when it, when it was in my face, yes. I was like, I'm definitely taking action on this. Yeah. And I'm good with confrontation. I've dealt with it a lot in my life, yeah. so it's not really a problem. <laughs> Lima said that yesterday as well. Yeah. He's what? like, I've dealt with so much. Yeah. It's, I've dealt with so much confrontation. Yeah. That's yeah. why me and Alima get yeah, That's a London thing. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Even like if I have a... An, a cultural thing as well, I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even if I, when I have a problem with Alima, yeah. I'm telling him straight away. Yeah. Because I don't I want to sort it out and then move on. Yeah. You know? So after that happened, I went and found a security guard on purpose. Mm -hmm. I went and found a security guard that I thought looked Lebanese. I said, Big man, where are you from? Yeah. He goes, Lebanon. I said, perfect, come here. I said, This bitch just told me to go back to my own country. Mm -hmm. And he was like, mate, ignore it. I was like, Are you fucking joking? Yeah. I said, are you joking? I couldn't believe that the security let it off like that. Yeah. And that just allows people to be able to do it. Anyway, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a picture of her face, put yeah. it on my stories. And um, it blew up. A lot of like influencers in that area she lives in yeah. posted it. And I know Jeez. for a fact, I got reported as bullying on Instagram. How it crazy is. is that? Yeah. yeah. And then um, I know she definitely lost some sleep for a week, but yeah. that's fine. That's, yeah. um, no apology or anything though? No. Yeah, because she knew if she if she had got a message with an apology, then it would have... Um, what, how would you react to that? If she apologised, I would have said, cool, not a problem. I'll say, I'll remove the post, just put a thousand, uh, give a thousand dollars to a fucking Lebanese refugee camp and I'll yeah. take it down. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. banter. But um, she wouldn't have apologised because she, she, would, uh, no, she would never do that again though. Yeah. She would never do that again. Yeah. And if she does, she'll think twice. Yeah. But it was, it was the fact that people... Around me, that Did it, didn't. Were understand. you more angry or? 
I was, was an anger that you felt. I was more. I was frustrated at the fact that people couldn't see why this is so wrong in many, so many ways. So that frustrated you just as much as her saying it. She that frustrated me more than really? she did because she's a she's an idiot. Yeah. She's she's not doing anything with yeah. her life. Like yeah. in the sense as say what you want. What you say is not important. What more is important to me is the people around me. I even gave shit to you know Ferris. Yes. I said, how the fuck did you not Ferris react? Is, Ferris, he, yeah. He's Turkish, said him, right? Is he Turkish? He's, he's Moroccan. Moroccan. I said, bruv, I said, how are you telling me to ignore this? I said, see all these fucking white guys. Cool, they might say it. Why the fuck are you saying it, bruv? And yeah. I was like, don't be a pussy, man. Yeah. And I like, I went in. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, well, oh Darren, you're, oh, you, you, yeah. you're angry now, aren't you? I said, of course I'm fucking angry. I said, I'm angry at the fact that people think this is okay. Yeah. It's not her. This, yeah. this isn't okay, you yeah. know? But then... I wasn't and it wasn't be... banter level, because you get that bit of... I mean, we banter. Level, banter yeah. Me and you banter back and forth of about course. the Turkish stuff of and course. the Turkish tornado. But that's because we're at a stage yes. where... I remember this one time... It's not aggressive. Yeah, yeah, I remember this one time. Alima didn't even switch. We were in a nightclub. Yeah. And some, we walked past, and someone tried bantering Alima, made, the, made a black comment. Yeah. Oh, I flipped on the guy. I said, what the fuck did you just say? Yeah. And Lima was like, no, nah, no, nah, leave it. And Lima was like, listen, bro, you're not at that level of friendship with me. Don't say shit like yeah. that. You know? So I think people need to assess where they can mm. have that banner. Obviously, we're mm. close friends, yeah. whatever. But like, yeah. someone just... But you can tell when some people say it, when some people are racist, this you can see the anger and frustration. Yeah, it's like they've got a snake's tongue. Like a snake's tongue. Yeah, like it's like... Yeah. They're looking at you going, I fucking hate you in your life. Yeah. And then I just see it as a reflection of they're not happy, whatever. Yeah. I don't waste energy on it. Yeah. But I'd waste energy just to give a message to more people. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But, so, so let's talk about this banter thing then because I'm on this toxic masculinity thing right now because I, okay. I still don't understand what it is, right? Yeah. And then Alima's talking yesterday, I'm talking about this banter thing, this male banter, right? Yeah. Male banter, fucking having a bit of, giving your mates a bit of fucking, giving them a bit of shit. Tapping on their insecurities a little bit, bit back and forth. And I, I think a lot of people are mislabeling that as toxic masculinity. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a real interest in this. Mislabeling put a po- it in a negative way? Like they're like, oh, well, that's the problem with the world. This banter fucking thing going backwards and forwards and men taking the piss out of each other and that. And I'm like, well, it, it's a real interesting topic. This to- I don't think people don't even know what it is. I don't. I think It's subjective. It is. It's I an opinion. It's an opinion. Yeah. It's an opinion. And it's also... Like the jokes that we make with um, like the close circle of friends yeah. is they tap into your deepest insecurities, yeah. which is amazing Yeah, because it you, doesn't... You, you can't cover it up anymore. You can't cover it yeah. up, number one. It also makes you stronger towards your insecurities and yeah. it makes you more comfortable with your insecurities, yeah. which is why you can do that with good mates. Yeah. It's when people fuck up and do it in front of people that don't know you like that yeah. and allows them to think they can banter you like yeah. that. Yeah, it's like me, me, me chatting to you in a way in front of someone that doesn't know you or me. It makes them think that they can talk to you like that. They yeah. can't fucking talk to you like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. First of all, I wouldn't even get to that level of banter because you're older than me, and I have a different level of respect for you. Because yeah. if I spoke to you in a certain way, I'd get a slipper from my mum. <laughs> but I'd give Mac more shit because he's like my age. You know what I mean? You know, well, you like, haven't mentioned that mustache yet, bro. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Huh? You haven't mentioned that mustache yet. B Tech James Smith. <laughs> 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 See, I could do that with him, like just for a banter, and he'll give me shit back. Yeah, but then I wouldn't do that to you because I'm like, it's like fucking, Uncle Paul Moore. Man, it's it? like bantering Dumbledore, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, dude, is this racism and this uh, this prejudice thing something that you experienced in when I was in younger? The past? Yeah, yeah. When I was younger, I've had racism in East London and stuff. Yeah. But I, I never, I never took it as, I never saw myself as like a victim. Like I always yeah. thought myself as. If someone's being racist, you know what? I'm going to make them fucking love me. Mm. And then next time they make a, they try and say something about, say, someone from where I'm from, they're yeah. going to be like, hold on a second. Darren's from Turkey. Yeah. Nah, they can't be that bad. Yeah. You know, next minute, you know, you can switch a racist mentality by showing a more, like, you know, when people like, with fire, you give fire or some bullshit. Yeah. Like, what is it sound like that? Yeah. I think it's really important how you assess certain people mm. when it comes to racism because a lot of people are not naive. Is not naive. The, what's the word? Ignorant. Yeah, ignorant. Ignorant. People are ignorant to it and they haven't been exposed to it, so therefore they lack in that. And because they're ignorant, they're now scared to talk about a, a topic that involves their racial background because they think, oh shit, am I crossing the line? Yeah. Like when I talk to someone. 
that's from like say not from the UK. I'm like, so where are you from? Yeah. Where whereabouts are you from? They're like, oh, I'm from Morocco or fucking Nigeria or something like that. Yeah. It kind of gives them the comfort of shit. This guy's actually acknowledged me. I can talk to him at a different He's level. In- interested, like he's we're interested. Before. You know, so I want someone to feel comfortable when they talk with yeah. me. And also, mate, I think with you, you are proud of being Turkish. Yeah, I'm proud. You're of, proud of that Turkish. I'm proud of Turkish heritage. heritage. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of being me. You know. Yeah. But I'm not like Turkey, yeah, <laughs> Kurdistan, yeah, England, yeah. Because I think anyone that's way too patriotic. There's a fine line between being really patriotic and borderline fascist and racist. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, if you love, I'm not patriotic at all. Yeah, but you, straight, I'm not patriotic. I don't know. I don't even watch England games in the World Cup yeah. and shit. But you know, if you when you meet someone that's so like clo- yeah. one minded, yeah, they ignore everything else. Well, I, mean, I was just about to say that. I think it's just I've got more fucks. Do you know when people get upset about football matches and that? I'm like. Nah. I've got more fucks to give than yeah. about other things than that. I'm probably I may have used to being about that life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Getting upset when the football team loses and yeah. that. I mean it's still not fun, but I'm like I've got more fucks to give than where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. See, See what I mean? Yeah, my dad like all his life he like it's football, 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 isn't it? Yeah. Like my mum can't Is he West Ham, your dad? West Ham, but he's a more Besiktas fan, isn't it? So like is when the when the football's done in the house, yeah. my mum can't walk past the TV. <laughs> really? It's mad. <laughs> Like, you should hear the screams. It's crazy. <coughs> it's crazy. I'll record it one day. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, one thing I did want to ask you about today, mate, was was this whole um, one podcast I, I saw that I love that you did was when uh, your girl Holly from Jordy Shaw came on your podcast. Oh, yeah. How the fuck did that happen? Like, yeah. Because those guys, you give them guys a lot of shit. I gave her a lot of shit. It, her. Yeah. Was it? It wasn't... I mean, you went after the whole I went after all point. of them. Yeah. I went after, went after all of them, but I went her specifically quite hard. Did you? Yeah, and she replied to, and she messaged me eventually. Yeah. She was like, you were right. Mate, I've got so much respect for that. Yeah. I think anybody that admits they were wrong or who's willing to be wrong, I think that's a really interesting... I'm willing to, I'm willing to fail. Yeah. I'm willing to fuck up. I'm willing... To, and you've got to be like that in jujitsu, by the way. If you're not yeah. willing to fuck up, you're not going to anyway. If you're not willing to get smashed, yeah, you got to tap. You fu- yeah, you're <laughs> fucked. Yeah, but I think that anyone that's willing to be wrong, willing to admit they're wrong, willing to fail, willing to look stupid, like I've got so much respect for that. It's I really huge. Like her. I message her all the time. She's yeah. sound. After after that podcast, then you had like Charlotte started messaging me on socials. Yeah. She's really nice as well. I'm trying to get Charlotte on a podcast because she's getting they're getting a lot of shit right now. Did you see that? TV oh, Ch- I saw she posted Channel something. Channel Five thing, but I didn't. Is that the Jeez. whole? They were saying they, went on, they did a show on on like plastic surgeries and they basically just fucking battered the way she looks. Oh fuck! Like battered her for like an hour, like really? calling that sh- they were calling her lips name. They were, they were just making up names for her and shit. And I'm like, wow, that is that's fucked from a TV channel. That is just bullying at the highest that level. End, that, yeah, because you know what? When when those girls like they came and I was chatting to Holly about this, like she was I think she was eighteen or nineteen when she first went on the show. Yeah. What the fuck do you expect an eighteen year old to like know at that age? Of mm. course they're gonna do anything when money's thrown at them. Yeah. They're coming from a place like where you guys are from, you know? Yeah. They're like she was like, My mum needed money, my dad uh family needed money. Yeah. You know? So when I was getting offers, I, I couldn't say no. You know, and they were too young to know. Mate, if I was eighteen, and I got off of that show. I would have taken it as well. You know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, I saw. I know a lot of people that have been on that show. Yeah. And uh, I remember talking to. There's a girl called Sophie on there. She's from our town. Yeah. She's going to come on a podcast. I spoke to her, and she was like, "I get paid for going out with my friends and getting drunk. Yeah. Who the fuck wouldn't want that job? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, so she was. My dad needed. What was that whole conversation like then? The how did it come, like? How did it come about? She in, she. She replied to one of my. Did that uh, come through someone else? No, no, like, no. There was no third party involved. No, nah, no, nah, it was direct. Me at you know so many times. Like you see, look in the inbox. It's me. Like there's a there's a <laughs> there's me like tagging her on a post saying, hey, "Holly, sort your fucking shit out." Yeah, and shit. Yeah. And, like giving her shit from the post. The thing is, you're. And I learned this this week. In her, do you know that inbox you've got where it's like. The spam inbox? What's that yeah, called? Yeah, yeah, What, the general one? There's like... No, there's the general, there's that one, and then there's the requests. requests. Yeah, requests. When you've got a lot of followers, your message jumps to the top of their requests. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 I get that as well. But I messaged her a time ago. I what didn't did message her, like, recently about this. Right. She she must have took a big turn in what she does. Yeah. Messaged me, 
uh, just out of the blue, she was like, Dylan, I love what you're doing with this. And like, you are so right and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I saw it as like you, you know, you said you got major respect for that. So did I. So a couple months ago, not a couple, actually like six, seven months ago, I did a post and I said, you know what? Big up Holly for doing this. I rate that. She flipped the script. She inboxed me after that. And then we kind of kept in touch sort of thing. Yeah. And then I was like, Holly, do you want to jump on the podcast and talk about this? Yeah. Let's talk about it. I've given you shit. I've got her number and uh, she got comfortable with me. Because initially, if you don't know me, you probably think I'm a prick from some of the stuff that I might do on socials. Yeah. And then I think when she realized she could actually be chill with me and talk to me about yeah. whatever, she could trust me. Because imagine if I was like screenshotting her fucking voice notes and stuff and giving it to the paper and shit. People are low like that. They do that. Mm. So I think she gained some trust and went, this guy's actually, he's not a dog. He's actually doing it for the right yeah. reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we jumped on and we spoke about Dude, it. That's a really interesting thing about the inboxing and going to the papers because I've never really even thought about that. Mate, people will do some... Yeah. Well, I remember when I first interviewed Tyson. Yeah. His manager was like, can you send over all the questions in advance? That we never did anything with it. But even now, I'm, I'm, when I when I book someone like Aunt Middleton for the podcast, even I don't do it with you because yeah. I know you're cool. Yeah. But with some people, I'm like, is there anything you don't want me to talk about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything I can't mention? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I think you also you like, know what? Know me well Everyone's enough. cool. Everyone's cool. Everyone's cool. And But you also like know me well enough to... Know what to ask and what not to ask. Exactly. Because yeah. the others, we might not. Yeah, you know so I did that with her as well I yeah. said is there anything you don't want to chat about just let me know because yeah. I want to make this because this is beneficial for me for her and for everyone that's listening yeah. she's admitted she's but I've said though every time I've called someone out I've said to each person I'm open to talking about it yeah. because I'm okay with confrontation Yeah. if I'm wrong I'll say I'm wrong Yeah. someone says like, why do you think this is shit I'll be like fuck I don't know I'll go research it and I'll let you know yeah, yeah. and I think that for her actually to realise that I think there's a lot to be said you know when people feel guilty and they feel ashamed of themselves and that? I think a lot of people struggle with that. I feel so guilty and I'm ashamed of something they did in the past. Mate, what you got to understand is that you did the best you had with what you knew back then. Yeah, exactly. So for her to give herself permission yeah. to be like, do you know what? I was wrong. Yeah. I've got, honestly, so, but next level. I, w I gave her a lot of shit back in the day. Her yeah. boyfriend was following me as well. Yeah. Who's, he's a footballer, isn't it? Yeah. And he was following me and I was like, fuck, you know, I've given this girl so much shit and her boyfriend's even following me. Like, yeah. It just shows how everyone matures, right? Yeah. Everyone changes and yeah. I just think it's good to... I had this that. today. Someone said to me, um, I'm not a fan of this term man up. I even did it. I did an, When my book came out, I did an article for the Metro newspaper. I'm like, what? All these guys telling, Piers Morgan's the fucking worst for you. Oh, you need to man up. I'm like, bro, you're going to tell Tyson Fury to man up? Yeah. He's had mental health problems. You're going to go and tell the heavyweight champion of the world to man up. You're going to go and tell fucking Jay Morton and Ollie Ollerton to man up. When they've had chat, you're not, are you? Jay Morton's a fucking, he's an assassin, that motherfucker, ain't <laughs> yeah. he? Do you know what I mean? Assassin. By the way, how laid back is he? I love him. Dude, he's such he's a nice so guy. Cool. He messaged me yesterday. He's so cool. He's such a so nice So cool. He sat there for about three hours and we're just fucking, he's Talking. just, he's one of the most laid back people I've ever met. Mate, is that the first like time just, you met him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. Nice when we did a podcast, yeah, I've had yeah. like drinks and stuff with him. He's yeah, like, he's cool. Yeah, he's cool. Guy. Very chill. Very. Chill. Um, but I'm like, you're not going to tell them to man up. Anyway, we dropped this. We dropped their, an Ant Middleton video yesterday, and it had that. It had man up, manning up in the headline. Mac wrote the headline, and someone said, "Well, you said that people that say man up are pussies and that." I said, "Well, I might have. I can't remember saying that, but I might have." I'm like, people take what you say as like gospel sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, is it not okay for me to? I mean, I haven't changed my mind on some of that stuff, but I think there's a lot to be said for being okay with changing your mind. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think people get so stuck and they're so stubborn with their beliefs in that. Yeah. I mean, I used to be into the clean eating thing. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But I think people, it's because oh, people don't like change. Yeah. So therefore, if you tell them something that's going to be a slight change or... Yeah. If... If they all of a sudden change them, you know, I think they like, dude. I think they like certainty. Yeah, they like to be. Even if their life's shit, at least they're certain that it's shit, which yeah. is why they don't change. Because they like being certain of yeah. what's happening. My son's really bad. For, my son's terrible at change. Max, really, he went to it. So he's been boxing for a bit now, and he went to a boxing gym on Monday. And I said, "What was it like?" And he went with his friend, and he said, "Well, there was no pads and there was no sparring." I mean, he went to a new gym for the first time. You're ten years old; they're not gonna have you sparring. Yeah. And he hated it. He said he's not going back because it was different than what he's used to. Dude, I remember once we flew to the states, Florida. We landed for about two hours in the hotel, and he's like, "Can we go home yet?" <laughs> he hates what? being away. He, he likes being on holiday, but he hates being away from home. He likes familiarity. Don't you want to sleep out on that? 
He really? likes certainty. He likes routine. He likes to know what's happening. It's mad. It's mad. But yeah, change is a... Uh, I don't know if it's scary. I just think people get so stuck in their ways that they, they're like blind to anything else. I think because most people are used to not changing, yep. environment, routine, all that stuff. So any level of change is scary. Yeah. Hence why... Which I think... Uh, this is why traveling and a lot of things have helped me because yeah. there was change every single day. Yeah. So when... When there is a level of routine for me, I f thrive. Yeah. And when it's not, I'm okay because I've dealt with so much change. So yeah. it's okay. I can like, adapt to whatever situation. Yeah. I'm yeah. I think that would be the hardest thing for me if I was in that environment in Australia. You're kind of around your mates all the time. Yeah. It would be a bit, it would be fun. Yeah. But then I personally would feel like I was on holiday all the time. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? No, I get exactly. I think you need that environment, that hustle. Yeah. It's why I never work from home yeah. ever. But to be honest, unless I really have to work from home because yeah. we've got no internet or something. Yeah. But I'm like, if I'm working, I'm in the environment that's work. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not in the environment. I'm not trying to blend environments together. But I think because, like, say, me and Smith do similar stuff. Yeah. It's easy because when we when we're at the airport, laptops on, headphones, we're working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the plane, we listen to a podcast or an e or like a audio book. Yeah. We just go sit down in a hotel. Yeah. We're on the laptop. Yeah. Writing an email or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, so we've. There's only, there's a certain people I would go traveling with, yes. but it'd be very hard to like go on a trip somewhere with someone that's not on that level, yeah. and you're waking up in the hotel or doing an email, and they're like, "You having a bloody Mary or what?" And I'm like, "Yeah, oh, dude, yeah, watch. that's a holiday, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a, <laughs> dude. You know, environment's such a huge thing, um, and I'm always I'm always sharing my guys about this. I think setting up your environment for you to win is so massive. Yeah, and he he has this saying, which is environment beats willpower every day of the week. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of people don't set up. Let's go back to like weight loss. A lot of people are in an environment that doesn't set them up to win. Do you know what I mean? People, the environment. It's like an alcoholic owning a bar. Yeah, fuck. Like you can't, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You can't, you've, you've got to put yourself environment, in environments that don't require willpower. I mean, you put me in a room full of 10 cokeheads, I'm going to end up having a line. Yeah. However much I don't want to, after a while, my willpower is going to fuck yeah. me. I think, the thing is, it might power. slip. Well, it has, an ex it has an expiry date. Yeah. And it goes hand in hand with your energy a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Is he here? Hey, so um, he has a question for you. Have you got um, any um, juice on Bradley Simmons? Is he here? He's at the door. <laughs> <laughs> juice on Bradley Simmons? Juice on Bradley Simmons. Uh, yeah. Uh... Not yet. Bradley's a nice guy. Yeah. Bradley's, Bradley's a football lad. We're going to see if he's a nice guy or not when I start asking him multiple questions. Ask him about me, see what he says. Ask, <laughs> <laughs> that, wait, ask him about me, see what he says. That'll tell you if he's a nice guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, so what's it? What's, let's, let's close this. Mate, I'm good. We're closing it out. It feels like a very short conversation. Is that an hour? Yeah. That's an hour. That's mad, isn't it? That is mad. What, um, what's, what's happening? Like, what's next for you? Um, what's next for me? I'm trying to still develop my whole Project X uh, platform. Great name, by the way. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm on the call with... Uh, you know what's bad? Like, our... our um, That was kind of just a stopgap name because we didn't know. Know what, you didn't know what else know, to call it. I know, I know. And it's turned into this fucking monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it might change. Like, I'd, nah, listen, I don't change it. Nah, nah, that's your thing it. now, nah, man. That's my thing. It's, yeah, everyone it's everyone thing. thinks that. Yeah. But for me now, I'm just going to develop that. I'm on this weird meditation journey. I mean, I'm loving that. It's, yeah. I've never, ever realized how powerful it is to, I'm not going to like, it did happen on a mushroom trip. I took some psych psychedelics. Oh shit, we didn't even get, we're going to have to do podcast number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do, we're going to do podcast way. number three. That was unbelievable. Yeah. And it's, it's, I'm enjoying the journey, isn't it? It's, yeah. I, and I hope everyone else enjoyed this podcast. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> hey, Mr. Darren Cartel, DK. Thank, Thank you so much, my man. Thank you for having Thank me. You.